Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Keith. Hey, what's going on? What do you got today? Well, version 2021.3 just came out. Mm, sounds futuristic. Yes. Um, so we're going to talk about it very fresh and a couple of changes that affect how we look at relationships uh, and our data sources within Tableau. Um, and these are features that were not listed in the new features documentation and things like that. So it may kind of make people wonder where things went. Yeah, because in our council, we just looked at the, all the new features coming out, and I didn't recall that they had mentioned any changes. Yep. Yeah. So there's a couple, and okay. we're going to show them. So we'll start out with the kind of from and to. So on the screen here, I have a very simple data source. Um, so we've got case data. Um, so this could be like malaria cases or um, tuberculosis or HIV cases and so on and a population data set. And we've set up a relationship on them on the year and the facility. Okay. So, um, so this is what we've seen in version 2020.2 when relations came out all the way through 21.2. Um, now we'll show the new and here we are. So the top of the screen all looks the same. Um, but what I want to bring your attention to is down here at the bottom. That when I've selected case data, now I'm getting that vertical or field view of the data. Mm -hmm. And I can make all the changes and things like that that we could still do before. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's that horizontal or cross tab view of all the data. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a new row counter here, which is nice. So we don't always have to look all the way to the right. Mm -hmm. And then a bunch of the, the different options we had got put into this little drop down. Okay. Here's like show aliases, show hidden fields, and how we want to sort our mm -hmm. fields. Um, and then when I click on like the population logical table, it updates to show that. When I click on the relationship, the relationship editor, instead of being a pop-up window, is now down here in the lower part of the window. Oh, right, because you clicked on it. I was waiting for the for the editor box to show up up there. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it didn't. Yep. Yeah. So now it's down here. Okay. And we have this little drop down that where we can choose what we want to show in this window. Do we want to look at our relationships or do we want to look at our logical tables and so on? Okay. In the data. So um, this is a um, a new interface for working with this. Um, so to just kind of review this quickly. Um, here's our 2020.2 and earlier um, data window. And here's 2021.3. Right. So no no longer do I have like those check boxes up top um, to show hidden fields. They've been tucked away in that little gear drop down. Yep. Uh, so to just walk through these, here's our show vertical or field view with our logical table or relationship editor that drop down to choose it. Um, all those check boxes and sort options got moved here in the drop down. And then we have this field and row counter for being able to looking at our data. So, so I think they've made, for me at least, being able to have this vertical view right away um, is gonna be really helpful because in a lot of cases, when I'm building out relationships views, I need to do a bunch of field renaming right away. Totally. And this makes it easier for me to do that and see what I've got. I was thinking the same thing. That vertical view reminds me of the metadata tab on a browse tool in Alteryx. Mm -hmm. It's the same sort of thing. It's just give me a vertical list of all the fields, what's the data type, um, everything about it. Um, and if you have a lot of fields, like if you have like dozens or hundreds of columns, being able to sort through them all vertically, um, what about being able to search, like in that case, in the horizontal view, in the in the grid view on the right hand at the bottom? Do I need to scroll if I have like dozens and dozens of columns? Yes, though you do have the sort options here. Got it. And can you search? That was always kind of a bummer for me, is I could never I could never search in this. Um, I I haven't seen one yet. Yeah, for that. Mm -hmm. 
So, so that's the, the major changes in the data grid in 2021.3. And then there's one more thing that I wanted to show off that's a not announced 2021.3 feature. Oh, the goodies. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, and thanks to Sarah Battersby for letting me know to look for this. Um, so here I've connected to a data set that has um, spatial data for the boundaries of the countries in North America. And in this spatial data, which we can see in our handy new data grid, so here's the, the ISO two-letter country code. Mm -hmm. um, it's like CA for Canada and so on. Mm -hmm. I'll just click on CA here. And then this data structure here, um, this is the well-known text format um, for spatial data. And so this is what Tableau actually uses internally for spatial data. And in this case, I've connected to a text file that has this. Can you change the data type from the text file to make it a shape data type? Oh, you're ahead of me. Woo -woo. So on this, now when I'm clicking on the type field in here, there's another option for spatial. Uh -huh. uh, so when we're looking at a text field, if Tableau recognizes it as spatial data, it can work with it. So it can do this with a well-known text um, data as well as GeoJSON. Okay. Um, so here, I'm not going to change it here. I'm just going to go to worksheet. Um, here it's I have just a, a big string right now. Yeah. So if I drag this, let me just do a new worksheet. If I drag this out, I have a just massively long strings and all this data. Right. But I can change my data type to spatial. And then Tableau's giving me the little red pill. It's no longer valid as a string. Yep. Yep. Well, it's a, also it's a dimension. It went from being a dimension to now it's a measure. Right. And it's not a measure, it's a geometry measure, but It'll I can collect. double click on it. Yeah. And there's my collect with all of my shapes. And then I can put this on country and I have this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. I'm picking so, up what you're putting down uh, precisely because uh, i am got an Alteryx workflow where I want to dump a shape object into my Postgres database. And mm -hmm. Postgres stores shape objects as um, strings. And so mm -hmm. like my like my next to-do item is to convert it to a string before I dump it into Postgres as a blob um, and then pull it out of Postgres as a blob and convert it back from a string to the shape object that it was originally. So kind of kind of same little scenario that mm -hmm. I'm that I'm dealing with now, Alteryx and Postgres that that now Tableau is is uh, letting us do the same conversions here. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. And but should we try one more thing? I didn't actually try this in the demo. This is uh Yeah, let's give it a we'll shot. Do a what little live, see what happens. Okay. So if I do point uh, let's just do um, zero, zero. Totally right. Because if I use that syntax that it should recognize in the text file, I should just be able to, yep. as if I was going to make a date, I should be able to just kind of assemble a, a string. Yep. So if, can I change my geograph, my data type? No. So it's got to be in the data, I think. Okay. Not from a calculated field. That's okay. fair. Yeah, I like yeah. the way you're thinking, though. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. So that's the the 2021.3 features that affect relationships and um, we're thinking about data sources and then uh, a little bit of relationships in there. Right. Thank you, Francois. If you're listening, a search in the data grid on the on the data pane would be lovely. <laughs> yeah. Right here. Let me find my field. Yeah, let me find my fields. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jonathan. We'll see you soon. Okay, thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye.